How are you all doing guys? Brandon here, welcome to Retro Dodo. And one product you've been wanting me to review for some time now is the RG351P. Usually we get hold of these products quite quickly. We've got a number of partners that send us stuff, but for some reason the RG351P just took a while to land on our desk because there was something wrong with the internals. So they had to basically bring back all of the batches that they sent out and send us a new one. So this is the one that we've had for over a week now, working perfectly fine. And I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna take you through the unboxing experience, the build quality, go through emulation, and get to the answer at the end that you've all been waiting for. Should you get this or the Retroid Pocket 2? So let's jump into the review. So this is the packaging you will get if you buy the RG351P, just like the RG350, its younger brother, it's very similar. And basically the difference between this and an RG350P is that this is a slightly different design, probably a little bit better quality, and it's got a more powerful chip. But the chip used admittedly is a little bit old and outdated now. Tons of handhelds have came out with it, but Anrinic are a bit late to the party, but in all honesty, it kind of works. So this is what you get, nothing really special. You get the handheld itself. We've gone for the Game Boy Advance purple and you get a USB-C charging cable with a manual. No analog stick caps because you don't need them because this thing is using the same analogs, analog sticks, sorry, as the Nintendo Switch. And as you can tell, the design is looking pretty good. The difference between the RG350P as well is they've got rid of the big chin and they've made the logo smaller here at the bottom. So let's take a look at the face. Obviously on the left hand side you have the D-pad, quite nice, it's not clicky. In each of the, these buttons it feels like they've got quite thick rubber underneath it. So you're not gonna get a click, you're gonna get a nice soft responsive touch. You got the two analog sticks here which sit inside of the shell which I really, really like. But the thing that infuriates me slightly and this is definitely a personal preference is that the analog stick and the buttons and the rib cage are different color they've gone for the gray buttons in the rib cage and the gray grip but the analog stick is unfortunately bright white so it does stand out slightly i wish they went with the gray but you know i can't win them all you've got your 3.5 inch ips display here with a resolution of 320 by 480 this makes it slightly different to resolution compared to a lot of other handhelds on the market but it makes it one of the best Game Boy Advance handhelds I reviewed to date. Like this thing, once scaled, is almost pixel perfect and it looks stunning when playing Game Boy Advance games. So if you're a big Game Boy Advance fan, then this is probably the product for you. We do have a best or top 10 best Game Boy Advance games video that went up previously, so check that out if you want a bit of inspo. The buttons again are quite big. They've got really large um, letters on them, which is quite nice. On the top here, two USB, ports, your headphone jack. Now the headphone jack, I don't know if it's just me, but why they are placing it on the top, I do not know. I feel like they should be placing it on the bottom for a number of reasons, because when you have the headphone jack up here, you almost have to you know, wrap it around the handheld, then back up through your chest and into your headphones. When it's just here, it just kind of saves you wrapping it around your hands, in my honest opinion. So I would have liked to see that at the bottom. You've got your shoulder buttons as well, which are really, really nice. They wrap slightly around the handheld, but not too much. And I do wish that the L2 and R2 were slightly bigger because they are quite slim and small. You've got your on button on the side there, which also goes to sleep if you press it once, and a volume wheel. On the bottom, two speaker grills, a reset button, and your SD card slot. And you're probably wondering, hmm, I'm kind of missing something on this handheld here. And yes, that would be HDMI out. So this does not do HDMI out. So take that into consideration if you want to pick this up. And then on the back, it's just your Ambernick logo with your grips there. I think it looks really nice. You know, the color scheme here is lovely. It does resemble the old school Game Boy. I'm liking like the DMG gray. It's just a great looking handheld. And what they've done here is, you know, they've used, and what Ambernick is especially good for 
is build quality. This th feels like a really sturdy product and it absolutely is. They've got a stunning display in here and it just feels like it can take a beating should you want to chuck it in your bag, give it to a kid or be a bit rough of it. This will not break at all. The plastic, the shell, the screen used, it's even got glass at the front as well. It's perfect. And all round, it is a lovely, lovely handheld. So what I'm gonna do now is turn it on. And one of my favorite things about the RG351P is that it's so easy to pick up and play straight out of the box. A lot of handhelds that I review basically need a load of work out of the box. By a load of work, I mean that you need to change a load of settings, you need to go into emulator settings, sometimes it needs firmware updates straight out of the box. This here, you load it up out of the box and this is what you're greeted with. A ton, like an easy menu here, it's Linux based, an easy to use menu, you go for all your games, you press A and it came preloaded with thousands upon thousands of games. Now, you know, that might be a bit naughty, but this is why it's good because it's already loaded and this is one of the first handhelds that have came preloaded with games which I didn't need to install. So all of the games I wanted was already loaded on here. I didn't have to touch it and that's never happened before. I've had to load at least a few to get what I want on here, but this had everything I wanted. It doesn't have every game in the world, hell no, but it has all the best ones needed for you to you know, experience a very, very fun, handheld now you know it's got playstation it, they say it can emulate everything up to dreamcast well you'll see my ratings in a minute when we do the emulation test that's not really true it can but if you want decent gaming experience no but we'll get to that in a minute so this the rg351p is perfect for giving or gifting to a newcomer in the retro handheld scene, something you wanna buy for ease that's came preloaded. When you start up each of the emulators, the actual keypads and the buttons are already configured to that console, so you literally don't have to change any of the controls, which is lovely. It was just easy. You know, I was expecting to put a lot of work into this review, but I picked it up and I was happy with it from the second I turned it on, and that is what I want from a handheld. Admittedly, China and Ambernix still need to sort out their advertising as what it can emulate because, you know, they're exaggerating slightly. But in terms of the handheld, how it looks, how it comes straight out of the box, finger kiss perfect. Now, I'm gonna show you a few emulation games or games using the emulators built in. And you can see for yourself, and there will be a rating in the top left corner regarding what we think it is out of five. So let's take a look.
So there you have a quick look at a handful of the emulators used on the RG351P. And in all honesty, this can play everything very well up to N64, majority of N64 games. The, the bigger ones like GoldenEye won't really run very well. Expect to get some crashes in N64 emulation. Over the past week, we did have two or three crashes in the N64 emulator. But apart from that, a lot of the N64 games worked okay it wasn't flawless you know but it was 100 playable anything under under that playstation one game boy advance nes mega drive absolutely flawless and that combined with the easy to use out of the box preloaded games superb build quality makes this a very good competitor to the retroid pocket 2 but in all honesty the retroid pocket 2 can play a lot more games regarding N64 and some Dreamcast games and even some PlayStation uh, PSP games, sorry, whereas the RG351P here cannot do PSP and Dreamcast well at all. That is a no-go. So if you're buying it for that, do not do that. Where the RG351P excels is the fact that Game Boy Advance games is spot on, pixel perfect, lovely jubbly, crisp, saturated the screen goes perfect with it and everything up to playstation one works a treat and the fact that the build quality is as good as any other ambernic product makes it a very high score in our personal opinion they just need to start coming out and say guys this will not do dreamcast gamecube ds you know psp it this is a n64 down handheld and i'll be like fair play for being honest i know that might hurt your sales but dang, thank you for doing that, and thank you for not reeling in all of these gamers that don't really have a clue, thinking they're going to buy this for Dreamcast and N64, because that's not the case. This is the perfect handheld for anything under PlayStation 1. It is expensive, coming in at $100, but this is a handheld that I can trust to last for years to come and play everything under PlayStation 1 perfectly well. And the fact that it comes preloaded all of the key maps are done for you straight out the box means it's one that I can recommend to a lot of retro gamers. Newcomers, kids, teenagers, older generation that don't really know how to do all this technological firmware updates and all that malarkey. This is an all round decent handheld that you can recommend to anyone, friends, family, whatever that are into retro handhelds. There is gonna be flaws, you know, it takes four weeks to come delivery wise. Abernick doesn't really have any support, but because I think this is going to be quite a popular handheld, there's going to be tons of support out there. So if you're looking for one of the best, how do I say this? It's not the best sub $100 handheld. It's, you know, I don't know how, like the best Game Boy Advance handheld out there, hands down. Maybe even the best PlayStation 1 handheld out there, hands down. Where this beats the Retroid Pocket in that perspective is screen wise and portability if you want a bit more power then go for the retroid pocket 2 but just prepare to do a load of work and setting changes firmware updates when it comes to the retroid pocket 2 and this will out age the retroid pocket 2 because it's not android based this will stay like it is for years to come with a few updates that's it I've been talking a lot, I can only apologize. If you wanna see a more in-depth review, we did post our written article a few days ago, so go over to retrododo.com to read that. And if you have any other questions, chuck them in the comments below. Yeah, I hope, I hope that's it. This is a great handheld, highly recommend it. You know, just don't expect to play N64, PSP, and Dreamcast smoothly. As per usual, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Peace.